So what is a lead? That's the first thing we're going to go through. What is a lead? A lead, I mean, there's a lot of different definitions for lead. You'll see it in a million times. But the one we use that I tell is that there's two components to it. It's a, uh, it's a person or a company or both. A person at a company where they may want to do business. With us, right? So they may. They may want to do business with us. The second component is, it's we may want to do business with them. Because at that point in time, we don't actually know if we want to do business with them. Right. Right. A, a lot of a lot of companies will have a lead. It's just anything, anything that comes in, absolutely anything that comes in. But for us, the, and, and that kind of is really anything, right? Like a, something comes in through the website, that company may or may not want to do business with us. Just because they send us a, a link doesn't mean anything, right? But at that point, we don't want to. Do, we don't know if we want to do business. Now the difference between a lead and a qualified lead, so when it's qualified, well, what's the definition of a qualified lead? Uh, and when we talk about qualified lead in this respect, it's qualified by marketing, right? As opposed to qualified by a salesperson. Okay. So in terms of qualified lead, what is it for us? It's, it's a lead, however, we do want to do business. Right? So yeah. they, they still don't know if they want to do business with us. Obviously yeah. they won't know until they sign the contract and that's how it goes through. Yeah. But we definitely want to do business with them. Now the question is how do we determine from that lead whether we actually want to do business with them? And that's where we get into uh, the minimum cover. So like our target markets and the minimum cost. For us, the minimum lead, so this is anything below this means junk. It, it's, it's, uh, it's just so it's it's either junk levels, or qualified. Levels of qualified leads. That's, that's right, right. levels of qualified leads. Yes, okay. um, but it's more, think about it from like a target markets, right? Yeah. There's a certain cutoff point where we say, below that we don't do business with them because it's not profitable or Historically, they're a waste of time. For whatever reason, we've gone. No, we don't yeah. want to do this. Yet. Yeah. So, in for that, for us, it's any company which um, essentially it has so minimum cutoff. That was less than three years. Three years. Three years established. Okay. The fifteen is it's. Um, if it's less than 15 employees. Ah, okay. Yeah. Sorry. That's your record. Uh, so if any of these criteria, uh, well, it's, it's not any, it's a combination, right? So if it's less than three years, less than 15 employees, and you're not talking to the MD's record owner, that's our minimum cutoff. So this will not, you will not even get these leads, right? Like, you will never see these because they'll be filtered out before they get to you. Yeah. Now, the other thing with a qualified lead, it's not just um, the cutoff, but it's how badly do we want to do business with them? Like, how do we rank them from in terms of priority, right? So that, that's what qualification is about. Qualification is about not just cutoff, but yeah. prioritization. And that's where I go into our target markets, right? So we've got uh, six target markets. Let's start with the um, the most interesting, which is what I call number one, the big boys. So these guys are, and, and I'll, I'll, like we've got a sheet which outlines in detail, but let me just give you a quick run through. Big boys are people like IBM, uh, Yahoo, uh, Telstra, 
So for us, they represent the kind of pinnacle. That's, that's where we want to be at. And the IT or telcos, they have a revenue of 100 million plus. Uh, they've got you know, 900 plus employees in you know, globally. Uh, they also, you want, like, it's not just the size of the company, you want to be talking to the right person, which is the marketing manager. Right? So for a lead to be categorized into the big boys, yeah. you have to be talking to the right person. It's not just the company. The company will be, um, you know, will be, it, it, it's fine if you're talking, if you're talking to an admin at Telstra, then it's not important. It's not a big boy, right? Yeah. So that's, that's the, the top category. The next one is what I call uh, channel partners. Now, that's kind of an interesting name because, in actual fact, it's marketing agencies. Okay. Now, this is an interesting one because we get a lot of business from our channel partners. And why I call them channel is because if you think of it from, if I'm distributed in physical goods, right, that's the, and I go, if I sell directly to the customer, that's direct sales. If I sell through a distributor, that's channel sales. That's essentially what we, what we do with our existing marketing agencies is they become our channel. They have like a whole bunch of accounts they've already got. Right? So when we sell our services, we sell it to them, who then on sell it to their customers. Yeah. So in a way, it's kind of leverage, right? If you, if you get one marketing agency, that is revenue that comes in. Like You could have so many yeah. campaigns. Yeah. You know? you, like we've, got, we've got two at the moment, we've got bang and marketing options. Now, they, those two bring in a lot of revenue simply because each of them have a certain, like they have account managers who have a bunch of accounts. And where, because we work with them, the first thing is like, okay, right, they need lead generation, we'll go through by time. So they're, they're very important to us too. Um, these, are, I would almost say these are equal priority, but since we have to give them you know, one over the other, we'll pick this one over that one. Uh, but they're both the good ones. Yeah. So now the next ones, uh, you've got the overworked, what I call overworked marketing. And like I said, the, the detail is captured. Yeah. Uh, this is just to give you a feel for it. Overworked marketing is also IT. Um, however, they have a relatively small team and they haven't been established in Australia a long time. So they are, they are um, they're to a size where they have a marketing manager. So there is a, you know, a marketing manager. Yeah. However, they're not large enough to be attached to a marketing agency. Um, they're growing. Like they're, it's, you could also call them like growing IT companies. They're the ones that they need, the, they, they have a marketing person, but that marketing person cannot do everything necessary. Therefore, they need to outsource. Right. Right. So, overwork marketing is a big one. So, an example of that for us, um, and I'll give you examples that probably, you probably wouldn't recognize them, so it's no point. But, um, so they've been established in Australia five years plus. Uh, you're talking to a marketing manager, they have an annual turnover of three million plus. So they're of a certain size, right? We're not, we're not targeting every IT company with a marketing person. Mm -hmm. They have to be of a certain size. The other one that's interesting that we've been making um, good inroads in is um, big overseas. And I, I took that, it's like, you know, you've ever heard the phrase big in Japan? Yeah. Well, it's the same kind of thing, except it's not Japan. It's, it's yeah. like, uh, it tends to be India. Um, Singapore, uh, India's a big one for us at the moment. So big overseas, um, they're like a billion dollar, they're a billion dollar company in another country. Right. Now they're trying to crack into Australia. They have very few employees in Australia. Uh, and they may not even have a marketing person. They may have a marketing person, they may just have a sales manager or a sales rep. Right. Um, the reason we go with them is that they have big budget because their budgets come from overseas. So they've got a, rely, steady, a reliable, steady marketing budget. 
However, they've got no one to execute their marketing. Or they may have one person that's struggling. Uh, and they're under a lot of pressure to bring in revenue or rest. So uh, in Australia, they may only be established six months. Right? So normally, we wouldn't touch them. However, because they have a big parent, uh, they're like a little kid, you know, big parents overseas with yeah. a lot of cash. Yeah. So big overseas. That's IT as well. So that's IT. So you, you'll notice it's like IT, telco, that's marketing agencies, like yeah. that's marketing. Then it's all IT, IT, IT. It tends yeah. to be all IT. Okay. Okay. Now that's our focus. Okay. So number five is, um, so these, these I would say are like hot, hot, warm, and these are like, I guess, what you call in terms of excitement levels. Yeah. Um, five is what is marketing. So these are either finance or IT. Finance or IT that um, they've been they've been well established in the country. <laughs> And they're of a certain size in terms of employees, but they wouldn't know the first thing about what, what marketing is. Oh. They're like, oh, we know we need to do marketing, but we have no idea how to do it. Mm. Uh, these and, and like these are five because you know they're not that exciting. Uh, they they can be, you know, but the conversion rate and, and the value out of them is pretty low. Okay. And then the bottom, the absolute what we call the bare minimum, which we already kind of touched on. The bare minimum could be any industry, um, but they have to have been three plus years. They have to have 15 plus employees. And you have to be talking to the owner. Right. Right. Okay. So lower than that, which is what we call tier zero, that is just we don't we don't really we don't touch them. No. You know, that's that's just kind of it's qualified out. Yeah. So you'll never you'll never see the tier zero ones. Right. Um, however, having said that, you can still get these these could still score uh, a certain amount. Like they, you could because imagine right you well no actually to tier zero generally speaking it's pretty much impossible yeah. that you'll be working with them. So when the leads come, they'll have a score next to them. Well. Yes. yes. By the time they hit the salesperson, yeah. absolutely. Okay. They'll not only be scored, they'll have a rating. Yeah. And, and this is not really the rating. This is more just um, giving you an idea. But yeah. they will have a rating and they'll have a score okay. before. Right? Right. But there's auto, automatic scoring and rating. Yep. However, that being said, as a sales guy, you, know, you have to use your own yeah. judgment as well. Sometimes yeah. something may come in as what is marketing. Um, but you feel that really it should be given more priority yeah. because of certain extenuating factors. This is more uh, a guide. Mm -hmm. It's a way to prioritize systematically, right? Because mm -hmm. the great thing is that, you know, and, and that goes back to the next thing is like the, what is the lead handling process? Uh, and then that's, that, that'll probably answer your question. Yep, okay. okay. So what, what is a lead handling process? And, and you know, lead handling process is not, it's, uh, I haven't really seen it used a lot, um, 